This is The Wilderness and the Wellspring, the podcast companion to the newsletter of the same name, about the difficult times when you want to give up on your creative pursuits and the beauty of the act of creation. I'm your host, Jeff Lunt. This is episode one, always starting again. Hi, I'm Jeff. Um, I'm a professional software developer by day, and I'm a creative person by night when I have the time. Um, I've wanted to be a creative person my whole life. I would love to do it for a living. Uh, but like many people who do creative stuff when they can, uh, you know, I do it when I can because I got to put a roof over my head and pay bills and all that stuff like everybody else. Um, but I decided to try writing a new blog. I've had a few blogs over the years, mostly technical in nature. But this one's more, um, I guess, kind of personal, but um, it's more about that desire to be creative while balancing the practical realities of daily life and responsibility. So this first episode, always starting again, is uh, I'm going to read over the first blog post. You can find the blog at uh, wildernessandwellspring.substack.com. And of course, I take subscriptions there, and I hope to make this a long-term project. So this first post is about um, a little bit about just the experience of how I've struggled with um, feeling like I was good enough or creative enough or, you know, producing as much creativity stuff as other people or whatever, and the whole sort of struggle of what it feels like. So let's get into it. Um, I failed a lot. Um, most everybody in life has. Uh, my failures tend to be what I focus a lot of energy on. Um, I don't really focus on my failures because I'm, I think it's fun or because I'm have some deep need to constantly improve. Uh, I, I'm not one of these productivity hack people. Uh, I, I've tried that. It doesn't work for me. The reason I focus on my failures is because I fear that no matter what I achieve and um, no matter what I do in life, that I'll never be good enough to meet the sort of expectation that I have for myself for what I want to achieve. And, uh, you know, that might sound, sound like a really high bar, but to be honest, I'm not that high of an achiever in the first place. Um, I just, I have this deep seated fear and concern that whatever good fortune comes my way in life is entirely up to the whims of the universe and that I ultimately deserve no credit for any of the good things that happen to me. Um, but I have to be honest, I, you know, I do have a pretty good life and a lot of good things have happened to me. Um, but if you're hearing this and you're the kind of person where if you look at your life objectively, if you look at your life compared to, say, other people your age, not just in your immediate peer group or your coworkers or the people you're immediately surrounded by, but against, say, like everybody in the country, um, if you're the kind of person that objectively is doing very well, but you feel like you're not doing well, uh, you might find some stuff interesting in here for you. Um, I, I really focus on my failures because I struggle to give myself a break. I, I always need to push for something higher, more, that kind of thing. And again, like I said, I'm not a particularly high achiever, so it's not like you know, I'm not freaking Michael Jordan just trying to be, you know, get to number one and stay number one. I'm squarely in the middle, you know, like I'm just, you know, pretty standard at my job. I'm okay at it because I've been doing it for 10, 20 years in technology. Um, you know, I'm not, but I'm just a guy, you know, just another guy. This thing where I can't give myself a break is exhausting. Uh, I'm really hard on myself. Um, if you can identify with that, like I said, perhaps you'll find a home here in this podcast or, or on the blog. Um, one thing about this, and, and one thing that's caused me to hesitate or write blogs in the past but then take them down, is that I don't want this, I don't want the Substack or the blog or the podcast to be about giving advice. Um, I'm terrible at giving advice. Uh, I think most people are. Uh, most advice is 
unsolicited and often surface level and doesn't get to some of the deeper things. And so, um, you know, this is not a, a podcast about, you know, the 10 ways to kickstart your creative process or how I launched myself from zero to a million followers in just six months, you know, um, partly because I haven't, you know, I don't know how to kickstart the creative process and I don't have a million followers. Uh, as I'm recording this right now, I have, you know, I think one free subscriber on Substack that generates, uh, you know, zero, uh, zero money. And so this is a purely creative pursuit. And by the way, if you were the first person to subscribe to my Substack, thank you. I do appreciate it. Uh, but, you know, I'm just here doing this thing because honestly, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just what I do. When I think back on my life and the moments that changed my perspective uh, as it relates to advice, you know, I generally don't think about the thousand little tidbits of advice, surface level advice that people often receive or or offer. Instead, I think about telling, I I think about the people who have told me a story about how they understood what I was going through and what helped them uh, without judgment or expectation in my direction. They're just two people sharing a human experience. Those are the things that I've, I've found most um, most powerful in my life for change and perspective. So, you know, maybe this will do that for you. Who knows? So a little bit more about why I'm doing this uh, and a little bit about what I'm working on as a creative person. As a creative person, uh, I'm a programmer code and in my spare time when I have time video games and that kind of stuff that's sort of um that's my creative outlet that's what I like to do um I I write software for a living um this isn't a podcast about my work or anything like that and it's not even really about the games I'm working on I'll I'll bring that stuff up occasionally but it's not fundamentally about that stuff Uh, my primary reasons for doing this is just to have a another creative outlet for times when I'm feeling discouraged and I want to give myself a little break from the struggle of the creative pursuit, partially so I can regain the strength to get back up and keep going. Uh, my particular creative medium, as I mentioned, is, is code, mostly. Uh, I work with other people to do art and sound and that kind of stuff. Um, this particular project is probably the hundredth thing that I've, the hundredth creative thing I've started in my life. Uh, as a kid, I, I found an early love of programming. Uh, and, you know, it was sort of this magical world with all these what seemed like infinite possibilities. Um, but I, I fell prey early on to this sort of dual, this dual-sided trap. Um, from a young age, I had a lot, of, a lot of encouragement from the people around me, which was awesome. But it, it instilled me with this belief that I could do anything I put my mind to if I just worked really hard and never gave up. Um, but what this also did is it it set my expectations for myself so high as to make any, uh, any achievement I might reach or, uh, any goal I might set for myself. If I actually achieved any of those goals, I would feel like, yeah, I didn't do enough. You know, I could have pushed harder. I could have done more. And so the dual trap is like having the desire to do bigger things, but ultimately, um, never feeling like I was good enough. Um, and believe me, you know, I've, I've tried uh, all the different productivity hacks. Uh, I've buckled down and forced myself to work when I didn't want to. And I kind of look back and I, I say, where did that all that get me? I'm a, a person in my early 40s, um, still kind of wishing that I had taken the creative path. And yet I know that the career I chose was a, a good, solid, and reliable one, and I'm very grateful for that too. Um, but when I say, where did it get me? Where did all that work get me? Obviously, well, it got me a stable career, which is great, but it didn't leave me with a sense of accomplishment. And uh, I don't know. Uh, like I said, this isn't about advice, and I'm not here to tell you, like, if you do this one thing, you know, it's going to change your life. Uh, it's not what this is about. Um, but looking back at those things, you know, the productivity hacks, the, the systems of 
oh, if you just do things this way or you organize your life in this way or you set up your calendar or your to-do list in a certain way, uh, ultimately those those things can get me through short periods of, of focused work and they're helpful to a degree, but I don't find very much value in orient, orienting my entire worldview around those things. Like the purpose isn't just to be more effective at work. To me, the purpose is to accomplish the, the goals you know, that you reach for. Um, and to be honest, I, I haven't even found much value in following my dreams um, since, like I said, almost all the good and stable things in my life have actually been the, the result of hard work, not following my dreams. And when I, just to be clear, when I'm talking about hard work, I, I'm not referring to this sort of rise and grind startup culture that's also very popular these days. Uh, what I mean when I say hard work is I mean like just getting up every day and slogging my way through what I have to do uh, so that I have some time and money to do some of the things that I want to do. Uh, when I say hard work, I, I don't mean like, oh, look at me, I work so hard. I mean like a lot of the work just plain is necessary, but it sucks. Like, like anything else. Anybody else that has a job that's like, yeah, you know, I'm fortunate to feel like my job is pretty good. Uh, certainly compared to other jobs, I feel very fortunate. But, you know, it's a job. You go to work. Uh, it's the same struggles pretty much everywhere. Not just because it, one job isn't better than the other necessarily, but because you yourself, you're the same person in every job you go to. And so you kind of bring your baggage with you wherever you go, you know. <laughs> this has had an interesting result for me. Um, I've found a lot of disillusionment, um, in trying to follow my dreams and, and feeling like, yeah, you know, some of my goals I've achieved in some ways I've completely gotten further than I ever thought I would. Um, but yeah, I just, I just feel this like, uh, uh, not a pity thing. I, I, I don't pity myself. I just, I'm just, you know, getting to these goals and these places in life doesn't feel the way I thought it would, which probably shouldn't be too much of a surprise, huh? So I've kind of given up on trying even. I, I don't do the productivity hacks. Um, I'm just uh, doing yet another creative thing, um, hoping that I at least will enjoy it while it's here and not really expecting much to come of it. I'm just doing it purely because I want the creative outlet and here I am. One of the weird things about this, though, is that even when I want to give up and I want to stop telling myself I'm not good enough, <laughs> I keep returning for more pain and more struggle. Uh, the only conclusion I've come to is that I'm hardwired to be like this. And I don't, I don't mean this as an exaggeration or some kind of a flippant... Uh, way to describe it I I mean like I, I'm really not sure I could stop doing creative stuff even if I wanted to years ago I'll tell you a story years ago um, I talked to a friend of mine who's a creative writer uh, and who wrote a novel and I asked him where his creative drive from uh, came from and his ideas and stuff and he he told me he literally had no idea and I've, I've heard this from other authors and other creatives he said it, it, it's just something that, that comes to him, it drives him. He can't really control it. He can influence, maybe bump it in one direction or another, but he's mostly just there to kind of transcribe what the drive is pushing him toward. And I thought that was, at the time, it's probably 15 years ago, I thought that that sounded like a very maybe supernatural kind of explanation or, or like a, an energy from another world or dimension or something um but i don't think until literally i started this blog that in this podcast that i was just thinking about this the other night that i think i've started to understand in my own way a little bit about not understanding um the creative drive and where it comes from because i've tried really hard to create things that i i like and that i'm proud of and i've also walked away from creativity entirely 
multiple times and I always get pulled back and I literally can't stop. And I, I don't mean that in a, uh, I, I, I'm grateful for the creative times, but I don't mean that in like a, oh, it's just so great, I can't stop. I mean like like a vice, like I can't stop. <laughs> it's strange. It's just how I'm wired, apparently. So I do creative things here and there. They don't reach much of an audience. I'm healthiest when I don't think too much about the audience or the numbers or trying to reach a certain number of followers or any of that stuff. I have to look at that partially just so that I get a little bit of motivation to keep going. But for me, I find that it's best that I stop there. I just say, okay, are things growing? Yes. Okay, great. I, I don't think about how fast they're growing. I don't think about how much time or money or effort that I'm putting into it. I just decide, do I want to keep doing this? And that's really the only answer or the only question. If I want to keep doing something, I keep doing it. If I want to stop, I first consider to just take a pause, take a break, and see if the creative drive comes back, because so far it always has. Um, or do I want to go pursue something new? You know, But I still, I don't know, I just have to keep doing this stuff. and I, I, I can't seem to get away from it. It's weird. And because I can't stop doing it in, in like a very strong sense, there are many times this is far from fun, you know. When I was younger, I thought, ah, someday I'll get to a place where I can focus my energy on creativity and the things that I want to make and build and put out in the world, and it'll just be glorious. And I got some really good prescient advice at the time or uh, perspective that, uh, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. This was, this was coming from someone who was a good 10 years ahead of me in life, had put in some really hard work into some creative stuff and had come to realize that yes, while it's, while it's beautiful in its way, uh, it's far from fun. A lot of times, sometimes it's just a slog and you just, you just got to keep going and not give up if you want to finish. But when you finish, you might be so tired of working on that thing. You may never want to see it again, <laughs> which when I heard this was a surprise to me, but I, f I found it to be kind of true um yeah so where are all of my fellow creative sufferers out there huh the people listening to this or reading the blog the ones who don't even want to be famous or successful necessarily and maybe you even have a stable and otherwise excellent job and yet you put yourselves through the emotional ringer year after year kind of wishing you were um able to dedicate your life to creativity and yet you know to some degree it's not practical maybe you've even thought hmm you know if I could just turn off this creative drive and just focus entirely on my career and family and my responsibilities I think of all the other things I could accomplish but uh, you just can't put it down for whatever reason hmm. like I said I, I don't do anything special in terms of achievement or productivity. Uh, I don't do anything special for motivation. Um, I'm not an exceptionally high achiever. I just keep w waking up uh, every day and for whatever reason, I want to create things. It's just the way I am. So I work, uh, you know, I have a job, I fulfill my responsibilities and and when I come to the creative stuff, I try to give it the time and space that it needs where I'm able. And whatever I get done is great. And whatever I don't get done is, I guess, just another item in the infinite list of things I can beat myself up for later about not accomplishing. <laughs> um, so that's about what to expect from this blog. Um, as for the rest, the stuff I'm working on and whatnot and the uh, if you have any particular interest in video games, then uh, you know I'll talk about that stuff occasionally. There's some information about it on the Substack at wildernessandwellspring.substack.com, and you can read about it there. Some somebody just dropped something on the ceiling above me. I don't know if you heard that, um, but yeah, this podcast is um, really about the creative 
side of things and the, the, the blog is about the creative side of things and only sort of tends uh, uh, tangentially about the actual things I'm building because it seems like it's about the work and less about the output or I guess you could say it's the journey not the destination to uh, use an old phrase so thanks for joining me on this if you're listening to this um, <laughs> well, I just got that really strong desire to say, if you're listening to this, share it with your friends, post about it on social media, <laughs> like, and subscribe. Wow. That was such a weird automatic reaction. Uh, it's like the words almost left out of my mouth. I had to like pause and then laugh at the fact that I was about to do that. Okay. What I was really wanting to say was if you're listening, uh, thank you. This is a, a new thing for me. I've never done a podcast before. I've done blogs before. I've done creative stuff my whole life and gotten nowhere with it. So <laughs> I'm sure this will be exactly the same. And that's okay. Uh, uh, Till next time, I guess. If there is a next time. See you later.